Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law and senior White House advisor, spoke out yesterday, emphatically declaring that he did not collude with Russia to help swing the 2016 presidential election. Kushner will speak to the House Intelligence Committee today after his interview with the Senate Intelligence Committee staffers yesterday morning. Kushner said he answered all the questions they had. The record and documents I have prov voluntarily provided will show that all of my actions were proper and occurred in the normal course of events of a very unique campaign. Let me be very clear. I did not collude with Russia, nor do I know of anyone else in the campaign who did so. I had no improper contacts. I have not relied on Russian funds for my businesses. And I have been fully transparent in providing all requested information. Donald Trump had a better message and ran a smarter campaign, and that is why he won. Suggesting otherwise ridicules those who voted for him. So, um, Clint, uh, the Wall Street Journal this morning praised Jared Kushner for uh, getting everything out uh, and said that the President of the United States should be as transparent as should everybody in the administration. And in part, the problems they're having now with the Russian investigation is because they didn't do exactly what he did yesterday. Uh, do, first of all, do you agree? Uh, secondly, were you satisfied with, uh, with the documents he released and the statement that he made? I think there's really two parts to it. I think on the first part, when I, I read his explanations, they sound entirely plausible, but I also wonder why we had to wait so long for this. If, if they put this sort of information out from, from the start, uh, Donald Trump's claims about uh, the Russia investigation being of nothing important, this might have helped his case. So politically, I, I don't understand why they do it. I think the, the second thing that I got from it, though, is absolute panic and fear uh, about our country's national security. You know, when I look at this document, it seems like someone who has no experience really in foreign policy who's thrown head first into national security. Uh, he talks at the very start of being in charge of everything from digital operations to uh, you know, managing the campaign team to all foreign contacts that come in. And anybody with any experience coming right out of the chute like that, if they had put anyone in with actual foreign policy experience, would have known you should not take these meetings. I think the last gap that I'm still quite concerned about is the meeting with the Russian banker. Uh, that was a bank that's on the American sanctions list. Uh, there should have been no contact with it, definitely not beforehand, and it should have been arranged with the Treasury Department. Uh, the other part uh, that's still strange to me is why we need a back channel. Uh, even if uh, the Ambassador Kislyak brings it up, why do we need that channel? What is it the generals can't tell our intelligence community, the military, that they need to go direct to Jared Kushner, who is just right. coming on board? Uh, it just doesn't seem to make Make sense or be in the best interest. Of so, the country. Uh, I mean, I guess the argument, Julie Pace, would be that Jared was brought on uh, to sort of be um, a mini Secretary of State. Explain what what his role appeared to be and what it was characterized to be by the president himself uh, in the early days of the presidency. Well, certainly in the transition and then into the presidency, Kushner has been the main point of contact for countless foreign governments when they want to talk about administration policy, when they want to reach out to the Trump administration, they often don't go through Secretary of State Tillerson or other officials at the State Department. They go directly to Jared Kushner. That has continued to some extent, even as Tillerson has settled into this role. Huh. And I think what you saw you know, yesterday was Kushner basically trying to say, on the one hand, that he was the point person, that he was you know, really running the show on foreign policy, but on the other hand, presenting himself as sort of an overwhelmed novice. Uh, on a lot of things, We're trying right. to kind of play both sides of this. So I'm curious, and then we'll we'll go to Joe. But um, you know, often people are chosen for their roles because of their experience. Even Secretary Tillerson, although from the business world, uh, had extensive international experience building his business. What is it that that, that Jared brought to the table? Was he a, an expert in Soviet studies or Middle East peace? Does he have a Fulbright? I'm just curious what wh why. He he had that extremely pivotal role and the president's ear on foreign affairs from the get-go to have access to these meetings that he forgot about. 
I think the only good answer to that is that he had the relationship with the president, frankly. And that's what foreign leaders, when you talk to them, say, that in this really chaotic mix of people that surround the president, that Kushner is the one person that they know will be there probably at the end of the year. He will always have this relationship with the president. And, and that is really the value that he brings. And that is that is why he is in this position. It's not any wealth of foreign policy experience. Mm. Well, Mika, we were, you know, Clint was talking about a concern, which you were suggesting, a concern about the fact that Jared didn't have the foreign policy experience to be carrying the portfolio that he was carrying at the time during the transition, and he certainly didn't. Uh, to put this into in perspective on, on what he was doing, um, he was talking every day to leaders from China, leaders uh, from Russia. I didn't know about that, but leaders from Russia, leaders uh, in Egypt, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, you name it. Uh, Donald Trump let his son-in-law be the go-between and the de facto Secretary of State, and it was always his belief that Jared Kushner would be the de facto Secretary of State, and yeah. they both believed that everything would go through him. So right. I think it is, we have two separate things we have to sort through here, Mika. One, <clears throat> was this uh, just about Russia and colluding with Russia? No, it was not. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but the question is, was it on the other hand uh, just negligence <clears throat> yeah. of a most remarkable degree? And is it a sort of negligence that is still causing problems to our U.S. foreign policy where Rex Tillerson is now hinting that he may be leaving the administration. I think I think we have two separate things. You know, negligence is one thing yeah. uh, in, in foreign policy. Uh, doing something illegal is another, and that's something that only Bob Mueller is going to be able to sort and through. And I, but it's troubling. Both I can ways. quote Trump directly I, uh, many times, saying Jared is going to create Middle East peace, and talking about this is what Jared is going to going to do. Um, so it, it may just be that. Uh, coming up, Democrats have a new game plan to win back power in Washington, and it borrows heavily from Donald Trump. The best thing the Washington Post Eugene Robinson has to say about their new slogan, it's not the worst slogan I've ever heard. And Gene joins us next. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.